Morning. Welcome to this gathering of Wendell Christian Church. Glad to have all of you here in the sanctuary together today. All of those of you that are on Zoom and on Facebook Live, we are really glad to have you here. Prepare your hearts this day for shared communion. We will be sharing the bread and the cup if you are at home or watching this at a later time. Please take time to have something that can be your bread and your cup. I was reminded of a youth retreat I did. We had this really meaningful moment. Everybody said, we ought to take communion. The best we had uh, was bringing crackers and Kool-Aid. Don't be talking about them drinking Kool-Aid indoors. It's come to mean something very different. Uh, but it was one of the most meaningful times we've ever had as a youth back then. We stopped with a piece of premium cracker and Kool-Aid and met Jesus together. Whatever you have for your bread and your cup, meet Christ together with us today. We're glad that you are here. Today we're going to be talking about the cost of discipleship. I would just like to say there's a difference between the cost you wish you didn't have today and the cost of dinner and the cost of your glad today. There's a difference between paying the cost of something you're not sure if you really want and paying the cost of something that you really want. So be thinking about the cost of this life. Let's share our welcome this morning. Welcome, all who are here. Welcome. Welcome, my physical, mental, and spiritual self to this moment. Welcome. Welcome, spirit of the risen Christ among us. Welcome. Together, we willingly enter communion one with another. Welcome. Thank you. given us your holy child, O God, and we long to believe in him. Some of us are so certain we know all we need to know of you, but we cannot grow in faith, that we cannot grow in faith. Some of us are so unsure of ourselves that we fear your call to discipleship. What little we have. Forgive us, O oh God, by your mercy and heal us. Let's sing our, our hymn of praise. Now.
Where we gather this day, in the midst of all of our days, we pause because it is this day, your day. We gather in order to define our lives, receive grace, give you gratitude for the past, meet with you on this day, we pledge to you today to fly ahead. We're coming out of remembering Mrs. Free when someone in our fellowship died, reminds us of the ones who have gone even before her who were part of our brought to mind many others who have loved us and we have loved them. We come to you to offer praise this day so that we might live lives, so that when the people gather at the end of our lives to say goodbye, we would have memories that point them to you. So we dedicate ourselves to you this morning. We ask that we would be your people. We would, in the way we live our lives, speak our word, and serve. You would actually show up in our lives and communicate your love through us. We know that's your desire and your spirit is full of passion. You wish to fill us with your spirit and work through us. We invite you to do that. So receive our gratitude for the grace you've given us, for the goodness in our lives of the future and for your presence, your power, and strength and grace in every day. We offer this prayer in the name of Christ, the Father we pray in the name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the bulletin, a uh, couple of things. Uh, one is that uh, Vicki Hanna's sister-in-law, Melissa Raver, will be having cancer surgery, so we want to be praying for Melissa Raver uh, as well. And also, uh, Melanie Pepin has asked us to pray for a friend of hers, which is not to be named at the moment, that, is, that will be having a biopsy. So we want to be praying for her friend. As they approach the biopsy. We want to remember the family of Billy Jones, Bill Jones, uh, his wife Edna, and Billy, Bill, St. Billy, Bill, 
passed away this week. Um, also, we've been praying for Troy Tatum. He's the minister at Hillier Memorial Christian Church in downtown Raleigh. Um, he was diagnosed recently with ALS and hearing disease. We prayed for him not only because that's a long uh, trajectory in terms of progression of that disease, but he's also praying about which research projects in Florida. They all have benefits, risks, and side effects and all of that. So he prayed for leadership. When you have uh, children still at home, you want to do everything you can, and yet you also want to protect the quality of life. Be praying for Troy as he continues to recover. Are there other updates that you have this morning on the mission here or out there on the mission? We want to continue to remember the conflict going on in Ukraine. Uh, praying for the working out of any signs of hope that it be resolved with less violence and, and uh, without as they have. We pray for that whole situation. And I know there are many things going on in our own lives. We don't have time to mention. So I'd like us to go into a time of silent prayer. We can all pray in the spirit as we are led. That looks frozen. Huh. Yes, frozen it is. Ah, we know. Lord, we come to you this day because you are the one place we can go that everything is going on in this life. Gratitude for victories, gratitude for all those times when things go as we believe they want, they want them to, but also the ways that we want them to. We do have good things in our lives. There is great spiritual discipline that your spirit helps us to embrace what it means. We can also break the means of our struggles. Some of us feel alone. Go up here in the lives through the lives of people. Remind us that we're not alone. Some of us are feeling guilty. Even in the moment of this prayer, we can pray. Some of us are feeling shame. For one reason and another, and we believe and entertain the idea that we're not worth what He's done for us in Christ. Remind us that we have heaven. By the fact that Christ has come and died in us. We are worthy. We are in a filter with his love and forgiveness. Many of us have folks in our lives that we're concerned about. In most cases, we have very little influence over the way they choose to live their lives. The circumstances they're dealing with or the sicknesses that they're besetting their bodies. We know that you can be with them in the depths of their soul where we can't. We offer them to you so that we can trust them to you and listen to you freely for the spirit guidance of how we might continue to pray and be involved in this time. So fill us with your spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you would have for us in this day. Help us to be Christ. Thank you. 
Now invite us all to share in communion here in the Lord's table. Take the bread and the cup. I'd like us to not only remember the cross of Christ, life of Christ is present in our presence and our communion and our fellowship. But I'd like you to remember the cross of discipleship, which is that you would identify with and live in harmony with the bread and the cup. That would be that if God has called you to be a person, and to have a mission and a calling in the world cost you. It's yours to pay. <clears throat> it is yours to be faithful. Sometimes God calls us to things that are easy to do. There are people in our lives that are easy to do. And there are those people in our lives that are not. Bread, the bread and the cup of the Lord. That when we are very hard to love, it's not hard. When we come to the table, we come to the table saying we wish to be the persons that God has called us to be, live the lives God has called us to live. We are deciding to be the people who are living in the peace of Savior Jesus.
under your body. May we realize today what your death and resurrection meant for us. Forgiveness, freedom, and the ability to walk with you through this fallen world to eternity. May we always find our satisfaction in you and your willingness to offer yourself to us. In Jesus' name, amen. I was betrayed, he just took the bread and broke it. This is my Lesson. This is the new covenant in my blood. We come now to receive and acknowledge with gratitude the gifts that we give together to support this church. Each of us takes responsibility for our own lives, for supporting and serving the households that take part in our lives, for being part of our community, for reaching out and addressing needs. Many of us have responded to hurricanes, to tornadoes, and the, the Ukraine crisis going on now in various ways. We are coming today to receive gifts that will support our church and the work of Christ around the world. In a very practical sense, we also got a $2,000 collection that we can't explain. Um, but we will, figure out, we will figure out an explanation for that and try to reduce it. Uh, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, but anyway, we will figure that out together. But we will pay our bills for our household to live in and the household to pay for it as we give faithfully to support the work together. For it is ours to do the glory of Christ. Sing right now. Today comes from Luke 9, verses 23 through 27. Then he said to them, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very self? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them. And when he comes to his glory, and in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels, truly I tell you, someone who, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Today we'd like to talk about the cost of discipleship, and it really is the cost of belonging. I asked uh, Rachel what the image was on the slide that you see at school. She has a picture of a bunch of young elementary age kids wearing green hats and sitting next to each other, and, you know, kind of cuddled up on a bench. I was like, what's that? And then I decided before I asked her, it was because they're all wearing green hats, and we all look like Jesus. So that must be what it is. She said, you said belonging. And, I, and then I remember the picture. I thought it was a person. 
we all belong here. We wear a green hat because we all belong here. Now the place that we all take communion, not why, we belong here. But this, uh, that was wrong. I'd like to tell you that Jesus is speaking to his followers, and he's speaking to them on the eve of, right there, right before, a big transition. Talk about how big the transition is. In fact, the whole definition of belonging to God is going to change. Can you think of a bigger thing? This is how we thought we belonged to God. Now this is how we now know we belong. You could be out. You might be out. You are afraid to death that you're out. And now you're in. Those people, we know. We like, we like keeping them out. Now they're in. Big deal. Belonging to change. I hope you haven't had the experience of hate that God showed you. Plenty of people. And they keep going to a job that they don't really find be what they want because they get paid. There are folks that would give the testimony that they hate their job, and they work for a boss that they don't like or they fear. In fact, the job they do, they're not sure if it does it good, and in some cases, I know some folks in the boss like the job they did actually did harm. They kept doing the work because I like. Yes. It really is a cost of discipleship, and the cost of discipleship comes with what, it, what you get for a discipleship. <laughs> well, Jesus was headed when he spoke these words that, G, that Daniel read for us. He was headed to the cross, but on the way he went to the temple. I just want to remind you of that story. Many of you already know it. Perhaps some of you haven't thought of it recently or haven't, didn't really know it. But he gets to the temple. And he gets kind of testy with the temple people. Remember him getting tested? And then he, he, he clears the map. And he just, he wants to be clear. He said, it is written, my house will be a house of prayer. But you have made it in the Now he's actually quoting Isaiah. So I just thought we'd just give Isaiah a fuller thing. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 7. I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. And give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted. And my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. A house of prayer for how many? You understand Isaiah and People that tell Jesus is the cross, they stop the man. Next sovereign, the sovereign Lord declared. Capital S, capital L, pointing to the word God. The Lord says, he gathers the exiles of Israel. I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. I will gather others besides those already gathered. Jesus, the Messiah, walks along and says, I have sheep of the whole deal. Peter is told to eat some unclean food, and he says, No, I won't eat in the vision God gave him. And he, and he has to have the vision three times so he finally understands God is not a respecter of persons, or either, in other words, God doesn't play favor. We play favor. Religion is my favorite because religion is the people who can't let go of the empire and make up their own soul power structure. That we, this thing, because I, I can't help it, I keep finding myself on the favor. In fact, y'all are on the favor. For whatever that's worth, <laughs> y'all are all on the favor. Um, and the Lord says, don't, don't play favor. 
Well, I can't help it. When I think of the future of this church, I think of building our church. Jesus comes along and says, well, make some things in your church that would include those other things. Really? You want us to make things that would attract them? Very challenging. As we shape our future together in Christ, to decide to shape the church, not only for those of us who are already coming to the house, but who God wants to gather. This is a question when Jesus says, if you would come after me, or whoever would come after me. It's a question of who we want to be and who tells us who we are. Who we want to be, who tells us who we are. You say, well, nobody tells me who I am. Yeah, that, that was that before you got to get there. When you walked on the playground in kindergarten, you already were something. In fact, the truth is, by the time you're five, you are who you're always going to be. And you'll decide what else you become. And you cannot stop being basically of what you were when you were five. But by the time your brain has learned to use language to tell stories, you have a story in your head, and you're part of it, and I'm part of my story. And when you meet somebody on the playground in kindergarten, you're trying to integrate them in your story. And you're integrating those people or segregating yourself with those people based on the stories you were told before you turned around. People who have trauma before the age of trauma spend their whole life trauma. People who have trauma late. Talk it up in court. It's much easier to get over trauma if it's not part of your basic story. story but it's a question of who we want to be and who tells us who we are. And I would just like to say that evangelism has been misled over the years with an emphasis. Not misled to something that isn't a good question, but misled to something that has become, I think, poorly towards I took the training and I taught the training to ask somebody if you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you said that we have uh, we have in that moment said if you want a deal now it pays off later and we have in that moment suggested that the deal doesn't pay off until And that it doesn't pay off for everybody, it just pays off for the people who get their pay. Think about it. When I finally thought about it, it was because people were telling me what they thought when I asked them the question. I won't go into all the stories from the people I asked that question to in the Brazil to a translator, but if anything you want, we'll tell them just a bunch of stories. Their really question was, was so. Asking this question, so I go to heaven and die. Yeah, anyway, I hope you can see where those questions go. Then why would I just do it now if I just go to heaven and die? Then why would I stop being Christian? Come on. Why would I stop being Catholic? Why have Jesus in your life now? And I know I've been bad, but I've been told by the priest I'm going to heaven. What else is there? How was this that feeling? I hadn't planned to go into all those stories, so I'll stop. Uh, but I've seen people say, I belong to my boss at work. I don't belong to my boss at work. I don't work. What is life today? There's a boss you don't belong to at work. You know? In the middle of the, in the middle of the. And not only that boss, that boss who gives you a job to love. A boss you trust to love it. And the payoff is to cure down forever. Right? But I'm telling you, it's hard to believe that. And some people don't want it to be true because they like being true. They like all the people. They like being in charge. Jesus comes along and says, everybody's people and everybody's included. People in charge who are the favorites of the world don't really want to hear it, including me. I have to serve them. Second thing I point out is the significance of our lives can be defined either by sin in, our, in us as individuals and sit in our empires, the systems we play part in, where we work, our communities, our nation, our world. Or we can we can then find that our significance is found in the love of God and the kingdom. Remember, I take the G out of kingdom, not just to be cute, but to help us remember the kingdom of Christ is that with a with a Lord over us, but but a servant who wants to be. The kingdom is that we're all related. 
We're all part of the children. That's the kingdom. The kingdom of God is Jesus. In fact, what we're doing right now on Sunday is that we're getting together on the Lord's Day to say to ourselves, to each other, and to the world, everything we're about to do when we leave this gathering is in light of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is informed by the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It is guided by the Spirit of Jesus Christ. It will perpetuate and demonstrate and bring about the coming of everything Christ has been. That's what we do because we meet here and we take Christ again as our Lord. Right? I'm just saying, but I still struggle with it. I don't know about y'all, but uh, by, by Sunday afternoon, as cute as she is, thank my God. And I had a distant talk. It wasn't just here. No, or it might be that somebody on the way home cuts me off, which has happened more than one time. Or left. I don't know if you've noticed, but there are mattress, it's a mattress factory going on the roadway. Tammy and I have run over, I've run over two mattresses, lay in the middle of the road. Tammy and I have a running joke. If we get it, oh, I've actually run over those mattresses. That's right, she's important. But we've seen a bunch of mattresses. What in the world people do is put the mattresses on the road. But they're there, right? They're right there in the middle of the road. And I would just want to say that. Uh, Somebody does that, and I have a thought, and I think, oh, Lord, I mean, that's not what people deserve, but mattresses on the road. But that is actually what I thought they deserve for just a second there. So don't do that to them, please. Not, not right now. Each of us, Matt, each of us loving like him, each of us healthy, each of us creating the temple of the Spirit our body, exactly like each of us living in our homes, our houses, exactly like this. Each of us in a community, Lindell, Wake County, and it, it is because of us becoming exactly what you are. We're living in a nation that is becoming, receiving the testimony of the world as it is, in grace and love, and then loving our neighbors, loving our brothers, and loving our enemies. Is that what we do as a nation, as we participate in our nation? Are we who we need to be to our neighbors? Are we stewards of the earth? As God has made us stewards of the earth. The significance of our lives can either be lived in slaves to the sin we have within ourselves, and the sin is part of the empire of the systems we, we are part of, or we can separate ourselves from that and identify ourselves with the love of God Jesus Christ and become known as the people who perpetuate, demonstrate, and bring about the love of God. Jesus was not easy. He was not messing around. He was not talking about something that only determines where you wake up after you die. He was asking a question about how your life, your house, your community, your world, your nation, my life, my house, my my world, my nation, all go. Do they go according to Christ? The cost of discipleship is that we say yes and then pay whatever price comes along. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. Uh, frankly, I think right now, following me, just sitting here with y'all, having had that butterscotch thing yesterday that happened, it was brought by somebody. I don't know who brought that butterscotch thing. Who, does anybody know who brought the butterscotch? Because everything was, did you bring it? Seriously? That was with me. And I have to say, I, somebody said it was good, and I went in there with a the butterscotch expectation. I had this expectation of how butterscotch goes when I eat it, and I thought, oh, that's good, yeah. It's interesting. They said it was good. It was fun. And I went in there and ate that butter. And I said, this is an amazing experience out there. And there's butter stuck in the bone. People need to be surprised. I Holy cow. I got it. Seriously. Some people says, well, how do you turn out that way? You die. What do you mean die? No, you stop doing it the way you do it. You stop following the people you follow. You ask a different person who I'm going to be and how I'm going to be. When you do, people meet and they go home. 
Yeah, that's a nice person. Go all the way. Open up her lid closet, take it. Dying is universal, but the content of our lives and why we die is about choosing our lives. So I would just like to say, you're going to die. I don't even mean to be flippant. I just want to be fast. You will die. Physically, you will die. And you will never die. People will remember your story for a time. They will tell your story for a time. They'll stop remembering your story, and they'll stop telling your story, but you will not stop rippling through the eternity of relationships forever. You got together after my death, and you told my story without a big impact on urban deep, my mother's father, my grandfather. You could tell my story without including the me. That wouldn't be my story. I don't need a fishing story. You know how many times God taught me while I was fishing? Who taught me love hunting and fishing? Or me? That's who did. And you think you know George Fuller and why he turned out the way he did? And you don't know her or me? You're crazy. You cannot know George Fuller without understanding who Irma is. And Goldie Aquility is the grandma who taught Sunday school who loved everybody. In the midst of the South, that didn't love everybody. Taught him to talk. George kept telling him, I didn't actually start to. You know, I'm trying to do it. But she was telling me to love everybody. When people around me told me there's some people you love and some people you don't want to do. Tell those stories. Take your, leave those stories out. And take your time with my story. My story will go on. Your story is going to go on. Next thing is we, the disciples of Christ. I don't mean just our denomination. I mean like our denomination. Everyone who chooses Christ have been baptized into Christ and choose daily to follow Christ. There's before we were belonging to whoever told us who we were and how we were going to live our lives. And there's now we belong to Christ who tells us who we are. We do that every day. So you're getting up to work one day and you wake up. I would just like to say there's a difference between waking up and getting out of bed. This morning, Tammy woke up before me. I stayed awake as long as she stood awake. Stayed awake as she went downstairs and back. Got some reading. I laid there trying to go back to sleep. I didn't get any reading. I just laid there, mulling over who won the game and all that stuff. You know, just do my thing. Well, there's a difference between waking up and getting up. So we're going to wake up, then we're going to get up. Well, I just want to tell you, there's a difference between getting up and going to work. You can get up and not go to work. And there's a difference between going to work and doing the job well. And there's a difference between going to work, doing the job well, and then getting your paycheck after doing the job well and getting fired after not getting, after not doing your job well. You understand? There's a progression. And Jesus is saying, if you would lie, you could be included in those who get up. Wake up. See in here. Get up. Listen. Go to work. Do it well. And get paid. If you think you only get paid when you go to heaven, you have not met the treasure. As Jesus said, when you get it, you find the treasure buried in the field. This thing I'm talking about, you find it buried in the field. What do you do? You bury it, you go back, you buy that. And you buy, you buy the whole field just to have that. It's after you belong. You live like Before you Here it is. How could I get a little of that? Some of that. And eventually get it. And the last thing is we belong in the kingdom of God. That's a treasure far greater than belonging to the world. Some people have not seen Jesus. They heard stories about Jesus, but they came from the lips of one who was not at all like him. They just kept thinking that Jesus sounds nice, but does not. They say that Jesus loves everybody, but his followers, his disciples, don't love him. 
must be. I would like to be both, but I'm watching all the disciples. Some people really have it. I just like to say, it's good news to pay y'all this week. You could be the one that shows them. Forgive somebody who's surprised when you forgive them. And then explain to them why you did. No, it wasn't that you didn't make me very angry. No, it wasn't that I didn't feel hurt. I do that to God all the time. I'm just, I know, I don't know, it sounds like a fact. God loves me. Nothing. God says, real that I exist and I accept the truth because he didn't want something to exist again. Wait. Well, some of us have not seen. Some of us have seen but not fully triggered. Again, I saw I saw the bunch of that. I heard somebody say it. I've had lots of butterscotch. I kind of like a butterscotch milkshake. Just kind of. You know, you gave me a butterscotch milkshake and there's no other butterscotch, no other milkshake that I go. That's a good milkshake. But that's not the milkshake I would take. And I was having these thoughts and I thought, here we go. Now I want the rest of it. We trust some people when they tell you they're not. See somebody who's not loving you, I want to give you permission. At that moment, when they're not loving you, I'm following you. Have compassion for them. Hope that they come back to Christ. Fully experience the $10,000 of debt forgiven them while they try to forgive you the $100 of debt you owe them. Jesus has the Lord. So, I invite us to stay not to forget. Some of us have been. Some of us have been. Yes. Some of us forsake. Some of us, we've seen the grace of God, we've experienced the grace of God. We've rehearsed the community today. But we walk on. In fact, the way it happens is the word of God comes to our life. Seed planted in soil, all will be thorns. Let's not forget, let's not forsake. So, what I'd like us to do is flourish. I love the word flourish. I put it up the title of that book. Up. Flourish. So, I would like us to wake up. And then I'd like us to not only wake up, yes. I'd like us to not only wake up and get up, but go to work. And I would like us to enjoy work. And I would like us to recognize that when we do our work well and our faith, we are secure forever for school. But we are part of the transition from not belonging to belonging from the kingdom of the world to the kingdom of God. What if you love your work? What if you knew the work you did that didn't do harm that did good? What if you knew that you would get paid now and forever for the work you do that you love that does good for you? Lord, I thank you so much for your work. Begin with me and help us each to stay off with the reality that sometimes What you've done for us, what you are for us, what the Spirit is here to help us do. Help us to flourish. Help us, even in this prayer, receive your spirit. Wake up. Receive your spirit. Get ourselves to get up from here. To do the work of joy. Do the work of love. Receive, receive all that we receive as we do the work of. That they see the benefits of our lives and other people's lives.
lives and their lives and ours. And as we move toward the inheritance of all that lies in us. Thank you for your love. We choose to take up our cross. Let's sing our hymn of commitment. It's written, it's actually printed in your bulletin, the words. The melody, I think you'll find familiar. So let's let's stand and sing our hymn of commitment. Take up your cross and say. This day, or the day leading up to this day, taking communion this day, and said to Christ, What must be done? Thank you. Receive the grace of God. But share it with someone else. Share it with someone who will celebrate with you. We invite you to share it with an elder in our church or with me. We look forward to celebrating all the things that we pray for you in our lives and our lives. Would put one hand on your heart. It's up to us to decide who we are and how we do. We are among those on this day who need the mercy of Jesus Christ. We call this to be the will of God. Now go and do the will of God. Go and share the light to the leaven, to the loaves, to the salt, to the earth, to the ones who tell the good news to the poor, to the poor and the to the ones who enact the kingdom that Christ. Amen. Pleasure to have been brothers and sisters to create part of your family. 
Any other announcements? Oh. Well, I hope that you have a have a good week. Go and live the gospel.